So when I was writing the script for this video, I basically called it Pancake Comets, mostly because it's basically a really good explanation for what we're discussing today. But to be more exact, it's actually a potential solution to a lot of different mysteries that started a few years back and had a lot of scientists scratching their heads. The mysteries of the famous Oumuamua, the interstellar comet, and also the mysteries coming from the New Horizons when it flew by the now iconic Arakoth, basically snapping the pictures of the most distant object we've ever seen. But specifically, we're actually going to be discussing the shapes of these objects, because that's essentially what makes them so unusual and actually created so many mysteries that the scientists did not know how to answer. But this recent paper that we're going to be discussing today potentially once and for all answers why we have these unusual objects, but more importantly explains Oumuamua, but also suggests that future objects coming from other star systems might also have these very unusual shapes. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, let's discuss pancake comets. Yeah, I think I'm just hungry. But anyway, the mystery goes something like this. In 2018, as New Horizons probe was approaching its new target, it actually started seeing it as this unusual bilobal shape, or basically a kind of a snowman. And as it flew by, it was able to capture these beautiful images, revealing that the shape is indeed bilobal and is very likely a result of a very slow collision between two smaller objects. Although I guess calling this smaller is maybe not really correct. This is still a pretty large object compared to objects like Oumuamua but even compared to other smaller objects in the inner solar system. But what wasn't clear at first but became clear as the researchers analyzed the photos more and more is that these were not actually spherical objects at all. Or basically these were not two snowballs. Instead these were basically kind of like two pancakes, but placed together side by side. And that sort of did not make sense at first, and actually didn't make sense for many years, but it is what it is. The shapes here were extremely strange. Or at least they appeared strange at first until other researchers realized that quite a lot of different comets we've observed previously were actually unusually flattened as well. For example, the famous 67P or Churumov Gerasimenko comet that was also visited by another mission, if looked at from the sideways, also appeared a lot more flat. Maybe not as flat as Arakoth, but still flatter than a spherical shape. But more importantly, around this time we also finally detected the first ever interstellar object. Interstellar comet, that is. And that was of course the famous Oumuamua. And while well, based on the observations from its unusual changes in brightness, the first suggestion was that it was some kind of a prolonged cigar-like object. Or I guess in more common terms, it looked like some kind of a poop. And though the explanation here at first made sense, what didn't make sense is that this unusual object acquired tiny deceleration in the solar system and basically changed its trajectory just a little bit. Or in other words, it became a comet, except that there was no tail. And even observations using infrared light that can usually detect a lot of carbon compounds, in this case using Spitzer Space Telescope, discovered nothing. So there seemed to be nothing coming from the surface and there was no outgassing at all. Yet it was changing the trajectory just a little bit. Which is one of the reasons why eventually someone decided to explain this as Okay, this is an alien sail, or an alien solar sail, very likely tumbling through space. But because there was no evidence to suggest any of this, and on top of this, it was actually determined to have a surface color very similar to a lot of other objects, including Arakoth, or basically was slightly red, the researchers realized we just don't have a good explanation yet. And then we did. And several researchers explained this by reshaping the object. It was no longer poo-poo shaped, but quite likely a pancake and a pancake that seems to emit tiny amounts of hydrogen because this was a pristine primordial comet. And that, even though it wasn't really accepted at first, eventually became the main explanation. It was shaped like a pancake and was actually producing outgassing that was just not visible with infrared telescopes. And mostly because of the materials on the surface and inside, because this comet very likely came from extremely pristine conditions somewhere on the outskirts of one of the other stars. Or in other words, it has actually never interacted with stars. It never had cometary emissions before. And though we're going to discuss the best explanation for all of this in one of the videos coming out this week, actually maybe even tomorrow, and I guess a bit of a spoiler alert, it looks like we actually found more of these right here in the solar system. Today we're discussing not the unusual comets, but the shapes. Turns out these pancakes are extremely common. As explored in this study you can find in the description. But I guess the question is why? 
Well, the main answer is that in all of these more massive objects, once they acquire enough mass, they acquire the center of gravity, which then starts to kind of coalesce more matter, making them more and more spherical. Which is of course why the larger and larger the object gets, until a certain point, the more spherical it gets as well. But that is not the case for most of the smaller objects, or the objects really really far from the sun. The gravity process known as pebble accretion, which basically creates planets, does not really work when there is not enough matter. And so because of the much lower mass, a lot of smaller objects, especially the ones in the Kuiper belt, over 40 astronomical units away from the sun, will usually lack gravitational forces and instead seem to interact with a lot of other forces, potentially static, but also very likely much weaker forces such as van der Waal forces. A type of electrical slash chemical bond that's normally extremely weak, but does become prominent in these conditions where there's just no other forces. For example, one of the main discoveries in the last few decades is the fact that many asteroids we've explored, including Ryugu you see right here, do not seem to be spherical either. They're usually diamond-shaped and are not actually rocks at all. They're just a collection of rubble held together by these van der Waal forces mixed with just a little bit of gravity. And as a result, they usually acquire really funky shapes. But one thing that becomes obvious for asteroids is of course the fact that they're usually also in more active regions with a lot of collisions and a lot of interaction. Because of this, their shapes become very irregular over time. Anything from the famous rubber ducky or 67P comet to objects like asteroid Eros, which seem to have very strange elongated shapes. It basically looks like some kind of a long potato. And that's because over the years, researchers started to realize that depending on the location, the composition, and the overall orbit of the object, they'll actually dramatically change their shapes over time and will actually look nothing like what we thought they look in the past. And so for decades, we thought that asteroids were just small rocks and would also be mostly spherical in shape unless they were extremely small. But in reality, they differ quite a lot and are pretty much unique in terms of shapes. But they also discovered that for objects much closer in the solar system, so basically the ones in the asteroid belt, they will very often have extremely different origin. Here, most asteroids very likely experienced a lot of collisions in the past, and for the most part, might all actually be just leftovers from many different collisions over billions of years. And because there's also a lot of gravitational disturbances from planets like Saturn and Jupiter, they generally acquire different shapes from what is expected from a lot of other objects that sometimes become comets. Here we're talking about objects from the Kuiper belt. And so basically objects like Arakoth. And so this new study used a lot of simulations and mathematical analysis to finally come up with an explanation for what a lot of these objects on the outskirts of the solar system potentially look like. They're very likely all going to be pancake shaped because of the way the leftover pebbles that remain here from the beginning of the solar system create tiny spinning clouds, eventually forming denser and denser objects and eventually collapsing into nothing but a pancake. In this case, the flattening is basically a redistribution of momentum, which is very similar in principle to how star systems form and why a lot of galaxies are flat as well. But in the case of Arakoth, two similar objects were in the vicinity and so eventually they came closer and closer and created one large pancake. And because after the formation of the solar system, it's quite likely there was a lot of stuff left over in these faraway regions, it's also quite possible that most of the stuff formed these very unusual pancakes. But why do we not see them more often in the inner solar system? Why do most comets seem to actually be a little bit thicker? Well, the answer to that is of course the sun itself. Even though it's believed that most comets coming from the Kuiper belt would very likely be flat at first, as they approach the inner solar system, they start to dramatically change in shape. Here's an example from 2006 of the comet 73P falling apart. And so here, these tremendous emissions from the surface completely reshape the comet in just a few months because the sublimating ice in this case doesn't just become gas, but it becomes really powerful jets, which then affect the comet in a lot of different ways. And so these powerful jets can generally create a lot of different structures. And by the time we actually get a spacecraft here and take a picture, we essentially see a completely new shape. But in most cases, the flattened shape is still sort of there. It's not always super flat, but most comets seem to be flatter than asteroids. And though asteroids also experience a lot of other forces, including Yarkovsky forces, which usually change their spin and then reshape them even more, for most of these pancake objects, they tend to experience something entirely different. 
mostly sudden emissions from the surface, and then eventually tidal interactions with either the Sun or, in some cases, some kind of a planet. Such as the famous shoemaker Levi 9 comet that collided with Jupiter in 1994 by basically turning into a bunch of tiny fragments that created a kind of a chain that you see right here. Which naturally implies that these pancakes are very likely extremely fragile. But this would very likely only work for smaller objects. I guess they would have to be less than 100 kilometers in size. Because larger objects, such as the famous Eris, the most massive dwarf planet in a solar system, would be much larger and much more massive, eventually turning spherical as well. And though right now we don't actually know where exactly this limit starts, if we go by Arakoth, it can definitely be at least 30 kilometers across. But obviously studying more similar objects would help us resolve this mystery even faster. And I guess going back to Oumuamua, this potentially finally explains pretty much everything about it. It might have been some kind of an object from the equivalent of the Kuiper belt of its own star system and very likely formed in a similar way through this unusual pancake pebble accretion. In other words, it was formed not really because of gravity, but because a lot of these ancient pristine particles coalesced into a pancake shape. Which actually means that Oumuamua is still potentially one of the most exciting objects to have visited the solar system in a very long time. And yeah, it would be really nice if we could find a way to somehow, maybe, visit it. I mean, there are some ideas for these potential retrieval missions, one of which we've discussed recently in the video in the description. But since it's still in a solar system, maybe there's still some hope. But anyway, at least for now, this paper seems to have explained why so many distant objects seem to be flat, and how this probably works for a lot of objects on the outskirts of various star systems. But in the next video, we're going to discuss even more explanations about Oumuamua, and specifically that there seem to be similar objects right here in the solar system. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.